So we're getting ready to do another of the um, flow light booster pump projects. Got all my parts in and for the pump itself, it's a 24 volt, but you can get them in 12 volt, 24, 48, 120. So there's a lot of options on these babies, but they're very well made, nice brass heads. And uh, for this customer, he wanted an extra head and he wanted an extra brush kit. There's a plate, aluminum plate back here. You can just take off and replace the entire assembly for the motor for uh, rebuilding it. And so we got him a rebuild kit. So that's a, it's a heavy little motor. A lot of people say, I, I'm not gonna spend that much money on a booster pump. This is not a diaphragm pump. This is a rotary vane pump. This is not a SureFlow 2088 or a FlowJet or any of those cheapos with the onboard pressure switch in them. If you're gonna go that route, buy three or four because this thing is gonna last you a long time, a lifetime if, you, if the water is pre-filtered correctly. And that's the other thing I wanna to talk to you about. On these, um, you have a, before the water comes in, so picture the water coming in before this filter and then before it goes into the pump, we, do, we filter down to 10 microns. And that way it keeps uh, this head clean. And there's a little screen in this fitting just to keep anything out. We're really trying to protect this head. Another way that the head is protected is with a thermal switch. It's got a dry run switch on here that's gonna be connected here. And if you ran out of water or something broke, somebody left something on and there was no water to actually pump, this head would get really hot and brass would get hot fast and this thermal switch would, would kick it off. So I've got to wire that in the circuit here. It's pretty easy. Um, the, the diagrams are, are real decent from Dankoff on how to wire and how to plumb your system. Now one crucial thing is if your source of water is below your pump elevation wise, you're gonna to have to put in a priming port somewhere to keep this thing primed. On a lot of systems, I try to get the, the source, whether it's water pump to a tank, above my pump, and then I don't need to prime it because it's just gonna be gravity fed into the pump. And it makes the pump work easier because it's not having to suck anything up. And so right now, just, so filter, pump, dry run switch, uh, flex charge controller to keep my batteries. We're gonna use a 24 volt flex charge charge controller. I like these little surge arresters that they have for 24 volt. They will shunt um, any high voltage um, hit to the system, will shunt it to ground. And then we put a variety of disconnects to disconnect the system. We wanna be able to put things in the system like unions, disconnects, so we can work on, work on the system. And then we use a standard, for at least a 40 gallon bladder tank. Uh, the, um, the manifold and T-kit, is part of, of, of a project. So um, right now I'm, I'm gonna be traveling about four hours from home to go put this in, but I am able to, with just some simple pictures from the customer, um, pre-build the system. Saves me a lot of time. I can make sure all my joints are good and I can take my time in the shop and plumb and wire. So when I get there, I'm gonna basically take this board, mount it on a wall, set the tank on some patio blocks, and, and then plumb and make the connections. And believe it or not, we actually use this, uh, it's potable hose, it's a, it's, like a, it's a braided three quarter hose. And this stuff is super tough. When it comes to freezing, PVC will bust way before this does. And we use this. So when I get there, I hope to hook up to the plumbing at this place, tie it in with some barb fittings, and you know, hopefully in a couple hours, be up and running. We'll be hooked to the solar, Again, this is a solar water system, so we're hooking the solar up to charge the batteries using charge controller. The pump will run directly off the batteries, and that's about it. We do a standard 30-50 pressure switch on it, and we make sure everything is fuse protected. This is 15 amps, so we've got our fuses out. We just use ATC fuses with uh, inline heavy 10-gauge fuse holders. We try to do cord grips where they need to be, and then uh, conduit to make it, to dress the system up and make it look nice. Here's our batteries we're gonna use for this system, kind of a maintenance free. We've got a Anoco 888D battery box, so we're gonna use that to protect our battery. And then we just use two of the 888Ds to make a 24 volt. So I have 245 amp hours. That's worked real well. And I get this stuff by 50 foot rolls, this Parker uh, 
flexible, quotable water hose. So I think that's it on the booster system. Um, again, you can get extra, extra filters, extra pump heads, rebuild kits. So there's not a part that I can't get for the system. Brushes, got a new brush system here. And so we can rebuild electrically and mechanically the pump. So, but the pump should last you a good 10 to 15 years on the Flowlight booster from most what people are telling us. So I think that's it. I'm going to show you the final version once it's installed. We're just showing you a few things. You know, we pull in stuff from different industries, marine industry, um, 300 amp, just disconnects. I try to put disconnects in unions and things like that to make it easier to maintain or work on in the future so you can isolate the solar, isolate the plumbing and, and work on it. So I'll show you the finished product and if you've got any questions or we can help you out. But basically this, I can do everything. If you send me good drawings, that's a good pictures or even short little videos are really helpful. That's the beauty of YouTube as well. Just make a short unlisted video and send it to me of what you want and we can put together a nice little, a nice little system for you. This is Engineer 775 on to the install. Okay, we're on our next phase. I showed you all the pieces and parts that we had to put together. And believe it or not, this takes like a good, easy half a day of assembly. It might not look like it, but there's, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of little plumbing and electrical uh, things to consider. We're going to be bringing solar energy into a disconnect here. It's only um, one 300 watt panel. So um, we're going to have our a simple disconnect here to be able to service the system if you need to and then on this the way the flex charge you can see this charge controller it's a 24 volt charge controller we're going to or you basically take the negative all the way through to the battery bank it doesn't even come to this so everything will be fuse protected we have a charge controller here that ha is fuse protected at one and a half amps times the um, amperage coming in which is about nine amps but we put a 15 amp fuse it's good and then you have two battery sensing wires here that are going to always be monitoring the condition of the battery and adjusting the, its algorithm based on the condition of the battery. So you have your battery sensing wires, you have your power coming in from your solar panel, and then your charging wire going out here. Okay? We are going to be using AGM batteries, and so the setting on the flex charge, charge controller is 28.3 volts for an AGM battery bank. So we will clamp it with our clamp meter and um, I mean a, a voltmeter and we will check to make sure that the, the voltage is correct. We have our little surge arrestor here. This is a neat little gizmo. Any high voltage is picked up on any of the system in, in any of the system on the solar side or on the motor side. It's gonna shunt it to ground. We're gonna actually, we already pre-drilled this. We're gonna have a bare ground running down to a ground rod on that side, and separate from the, the battery. Okay, then on the pump itself, we've got our dry run switch that is wired into the back of the motor. So if this brass head ever heats up, it'll shut the, the motor down. There's a reset button, a little re red reset button. I have my finger on in here. That's how you reset. A lot of people forget to reset if they have an issue. Um, and for service, I just put one of the marine, or one. Of, it's a 300 amp heavy duty little disconnect, spring loaded disconnect so if you want to turn the power from the battery off to the motor to work on it just pop that key out and put it on a string so you don't lose lose your keys pretty simple and then the power from the battery bank will be coming up here into the to run the motor and then we're going to plumb we got to do our let's talk plumbing now we have this 10 micron pre-filter the water will be coming up from the ground but there's an elevated tank that will supply the, the entire system, so I didn't need a, to prime it because the tank is above this pump, you'll see. And then I'm just going to loop in and put my, my water will come through the filter into the suction side of the pump, out the positive side, over to my bladder tank. So that's the pump system. And then your standard, standard tank T. I like these with Denkoff, this Zilnet tank has a, a male nipple. You know, a lot of the tanks are recessed and you got to do some other things, but this easy kit that comes with the Dankoff pumps, it's just, it's easy to work on externally. I also like it because it's higher off the ground 
So when you want to hook a hose to your spigot here, then it's it's much easier because you have like six inches to work with as opposed to two. And then this will be sending water to the house. So we'll be pressurizing here. One of the other things to pay attention to when you're wiring a DC motor, DC pump, is to wire it according to the NEC DC code. Obviously, I'm gonna show you there, but the negatives um, pass through. You just build a jumper on, on here with a positive, so it'll be red, 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 and then greens. The ground will be um, grounded to, or bonded to the switch here. You'll see, it'll make sense when you see it. So, that is getting ready for the job. We'll head out, and um, it's just nice to kind of take your time instead of doing this in the dirt, in the sand, to be able to pre-build as much as I can in the shop. So, all right, let's go put this baby in. Okay, we got to the job site. Last time you saw this, it was on the bench. And gone ahead and made our hookups to the solar, and she flex charges charging nicely. It's already in divert. The batteries are topping off here. That'll go off. It's charging nice. And that's pretty much it. All the electrical is done. The motor is wired through to the pressure switch and then to our battery bank. So this was done again because I had the picture of the building and the layout of everything. So now I'm going to do my plumbing. I got a one inch line here, I'm going to connect it to my tank. I got an inch and a quarter line here that I'm going to plumb to. That's my inlet for my elevated tank. It'll come up into my pre filter then into the input side of the Dankhoff Flow Light booster pump. And then my output for my booster pump will come down, which is perfectly in line with my check valve. So, all right, making progress as long as I have my, you gotta make sure you have all the parts. So far, so good, I haven't had to run anywhere and that makes the job go nice. So, let's uh, finish her up. Okay, we're back. We're on site. We've uh, you've seen the, all the pieces and the parts kind of pre-assembled in the shop, and now we're finishing up the flow light booster. This is a 29, 24, and she's working great. They're very loud, kind of loud, especially on video. So I'm not going to do that. So just a review. We got the solar coming in here. This is uh, completely running off of one 285 watt solar panel. And I put disconnects in here so you don't have to go out to the solar panel to turn it off. And we're on here now. The batteries are absolutely full. You have the red light on. That means it's in divert. It's turned the solar on. That might turn off and on a few times during this video. And some of the other things set up here. You see the filter. We were a little bit dirty on the water. The first water it was kind of stagnant in the pipe. So that's why that filter is already dirty. But we've since flushed out the tank. And then our dry run switch is our other piece of protection. We want to kind of protect this brass head. That's what that's what gives this pipe a pump, a 15 to 20 year life. So it's important that we protect that. We want to keep it cool. We want to keep water in it. And then just a quick little pop out switch for a little DC 300 amp rated switch, just for servicing. It's not really doing anything, but just disconnecting. The motor from the battery so um, you can work on it if you need to. All the parts on the pump can be replaced, brushes, motor head, any part you can get if you need to if you want backup parts. So we ended up putting in a flush, a, a way to flush the tank if we need to, separate from the shutoff valve supplying the water to the 10 micron pre-filter. Then a standard little bladder tank, again I like this because it's got the male and the male nipple keeps it up, the tank tee up off of the ground. Most tanks you're on the ground with everything. So I like this style. And then we take the water to the house. So I think that's it. Battery box is again one of those NOCO. Just get them off of Amazon. NOCO 8A 8D. Uh, it's two 8A 8D batteries in series for a 245 amp hour battery bank. So here we go. We got another off grid water system installed if we can help you in any way. Let us know. We can design one over the phone. Just send me a few pictures and we can uh, pretty much match what you have and either deliver and install it or have you do it yourself. Okay, Engineer 775 signing out.
this is kind of noisy. You see 8.3 amps coming in from one uh, solar panel. And then the motor's running, and I'm going to measure the amperage on that, and I'm at 8, 7.8. What that tells me is that the solar panel provides enough power for the pump. It just, at 50 PSI, I'm not even, if the sun is shining on the panel, it's not touching the batteries. It's a beautiful thing. So, Flex Charge Charge Controller, you just saw it going to divert. This is a system I did a couple years ago, and I'm in the deep, dank crawl space this morning. Um, flow light 20, 29, 20, 24 booster pump works great and the flex charge is keeping the batteries maintained and um, it's just simple booster pump, a cut off switch for maintenance purposes, a charge controller, a surge arrester and then all my connections I try to keep in conduit as much as possible. This could have been in a big battery box it's not as neat there's just two group 31 batteries in series uh, the folks don't really want to do battery maintenance, so I did use AGM batteries on this, so they're a sealed battery. That's the beauty of this charge controller. It works great with AGMs. It doesn't take the voltage too high. It um, takes the voltage up to 28.3 max on the sealed, and that's she's doing great. When you see a red light, that's not a bad thing on this baby. That's in divert mode. That means it's going through its charging algorithm and turning off the solar there. I can prove that to you. DC amps, we're off, then we got power, and then it goes off. And then red is off. When she cycles, she'll allow the uh, solar energy to flow to the batteries. And how does it know to do that? Well, you'll see these white and black sensing wires. They're tied to the battery, and they sense the condition of the battery and allow the uh, pass through from the solar through the switch to the battery positive. And now she's not going to go off. To prove that, she should bounce back up here in a second. And um, she should. But she won't until the red light goes off. Now, I can force the red light off if I run this pump, but we're not going to do that. Am I? I have no patience. There she goes. So 8.4 amp. And then she turned right back off. So hopefully you caught that. All right. This is another um, booster pump sy system we've done. Uh, tucked away in a crawl space. It's been here a couple years. It works great, runs their whole house. And we've got a hook to a just a 40 gallon bladder tank and works extremely well. So, okay.